So in, in terms of uh, agency then, users are really, really involved. They not only just gatekeep, now it's gone well beyond that. They are actually able to create content and recommend content. And in the case of blogs, for example, they are actually generating new content. Lots of people who never used to write before are now very famous because of their blog. In fact, there are A-listers, -list, A A-list bloggers, so to speak, who actually can make a living out of blogging. Right? They, there are advertisers who would come and put ads on their blog, and they could have a decent living out of just writing their comments and opinions day in and day out. And so it's a way of uh, you know, thinking. You, what used to be your private thinking, now it can be public. And, communicated and therefore uh, disseminated on a mass scale. So the self or the user has become, in many ways, uh, the source of information. I am the source of information. I'm not just the receiver anymore. So what happens when I'm the source of information? I actually become much more interactive in my, in my uh, activities. I become very engaged. I become much more conscious. So people who go to Civic, uh, Huffington Post, for example, they become much more civically minded and engaged in a topic and start discussing the details of political issue where previously they may not have or not given a choice to kind of chance to comment. They may not be as involved. Self as source also, the psychology of that is such that it breeds positive attitudes because it's your identity that's wrapped around it. So if I am forwarding something, like if you're forwarding something to all your friends through a Twitter, uh, through your Twitter account, you feel somehow that your identity is wrapped around that, right? Because you feel like, oh, my friends will think that I'm the one who sent it to them. So, you know, it's my name against, you know, next to that article or whatever it is that, I've, that you forward. So there's an identity issue that's wrapped around that. So it's not just your engagement or your involvement, but also your identity. This is intrinsically appealing given uh, American individualism. In fact, more appealing in this country than in many other countries. These kinds of um, uh, personal media are indeed much more powerful in this country than in others. And it can be a motivator for action. People who become sources of news are also people who, will, who are more likely to go to uh, political rallies and campaigns and take action in terms of uh, motivating others to uh, take up healthful uh, habits, healthy habits, preventive behaviors, and things like that. So some of our studies have kind of uh, honed in on those kinds of attributes. It also gives people a sense of control. It's so like I'm the master of my universe when I'm selecting stories and I'm um, you know, doing things with information in the information universe. And so it's not anymore just a choice given to me by editors. It's I have control over my information universe. So these are kind of the psychological underpinnings of what's really happening uh, with social media, what it's doing to us. From a communication point of view, you can see what a dramatic change it is. Typically, historically, when we would see the, the classic, classic mode of communication is you would have a source, you would have a medium, and you would have a receiver. Right? These would be the classic ways of thinking of communication. Like CNN news, your TV box, and you here, sitting here watching CNN. That's your classic way of thinking about communication. In our field, for about 50 years, this is the model that we all kind of espouse. So what's happened now is this receiver has become the source. So you can see that it's kind of turned communication models on its head in a very dramatic way. And that's, that's the essence of what social media have done. The receiver has become the centerpiece, and the self, so to speak, has become very powerful in, um, in kind of asserting identity and also having all kinds of uh, receivers themselves. Like they have followers themselves. In fact, we've done some very nice studies where we uh, make people create a blog. Remember I said you can make people uh, train to create a blog within 10 minutes. Now we did uh, some studies where we uh, made them uh, blog and then unbeknownst to them half the subjects in the experiment would get a lot of comments in a few days and the other half would get very few comments. But people who got a lot of comments they felt a significantly higher sense of community and that higher sense of community is very consequential. In another condition, we had a lot of people visiting that site, the one that they blogged. And for other half of the subjects, we had very few visitors. People who had a lot of visitors felt a very strong sense of agency that we measured psychologically. 
And as it turns out, sense of community and sense of agency were both very strongly associated with sense of influence, which is an indicator of empowerment. So in that sense, this is an empowering uh, tool. Blogging, blogging is an empowering tool, not simply because it helps you play with your identity and gives you control, but also because your receivers, you have a lot of receivers out there who are kind of, uh, you know, reading your work and commenting on it and actively thinking about it. And that's, that's very powerful. So in general, we talked about self, but there's also self multiplied, right? There's the audience. So when we talk about receivers, there's not just me, but also there are others, my peers. So that's really where the socialness of some of this comes in. So I'm, I'm forwarding things to other receivers just like me kind of thing. And they are doing the same. And this, this whole kind of thinking gave rise to a kind of typology of sources. So no more do communication sources manifest themselves just in terms of visible sources like CNN or uh, the New York Times.com on the website. But even technologically, they could be sources. Like even media sometimes can be sources. Like Google News, you've all heard of Google News, which is actually run by a robot. The robot decides what are the most important stories of the day. There's no person in an editorial boardroom. So there, it's the technology that's actually serving as a source, so to speak, for you. And then receiver sources can be broken down into audience as a collective and self as an individual. So when you go to Amazon.com and buy, make a purchase, you know how often it says there are other people, other people who are looking for the same book. You know what they bought? They bought these other five books, right? And these are the star ratings. So when you go to book travel, when you're going to uh, Hawaii or some place nice, and you go to a hotel website and you want to um, you know, make a purchase for a hotel room, what happens? You see some are rated as high. And there are user comments that say, I found a cockroach in the bathroom. These are all other users serving as sources for you. The audience as a collective is rating hotel rooms. These days, we, we don't normally purchase hotel rooms unless we see other people's uh, comments, right? And we don't purchase a camera lightly. Uh, previously, we would just go ask the salesperson. But these days, we want all kinds of user reviews on online websites and things like that. So audience as a collective can serve as sources. But every kind of source has its purpose. And in our studies, we've shown that depending on who or what is considered a source for a piece of information, the way people evaluate that information changes. So when you say that it came from a newspaper, that, that means journalistic agency. Be giving it journalistic agency. There, the expertise domain plays a role. Like, does this, is this an expert newspaper? If this is a political investigative story, they want to know, does this, did this come from Washington Post? Or did it come from, um, you know, a National Enquirer or something like that, right? They want to know uh, how to judge the expertise if it's a journalistic agency. But if it's a machine, if it's Google News, right, they apply the machine heuristic. The machine heuristic is basically a short mental shortcut that says this, this story is probably objective. This is probably not uh, subject to any kind of ideological biases. Like Fox News, we know is ideologically biased in a certain direction, right? We will not attribute that to Google News, for example, because Google News is run by a machine. So it, chances are it may not know enough to make ideological discriminations in the kinds of stories that it supplies you. Self-agency is where we already have talked quite a bit about it, where the shortcut that we apply is how much you own that. So it's almost ownership, like you own that piece of story. This is, this is your story that you're forwarding or that you're creating and so forth. Peer agency which is what we talked about in the context of Amazon.com and travel booking and so forth, gives rise to what we call bandwagon heuristic, which is the idea that everybody else thinks this is a great story, so I must think it's a great story as well. Or everybody else thinks this is a good book to read, then I should get that book as well. So that's kind of like uh, following the bandwagon, so to speak. So these are kinds of effects, bandwagon effect or onus uh, effect or the machine heuristic, all these are effects due to different aspects of uh, modern um, interactive uh, technologies. 